What's going on everyone? Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to scale objects in the Zapekist track builder. I got this question quite a bit in one of my last videos. You guys were really curious to find out how I actually did it and granted I learned from somebody else but I figured I would make a tutorial on it. So without further ado, let's get right into it. They've got a cat tail just chilling there. Now there's two methods as of July 2022 to scale objects in the Zapekist track builder. We're going to go over both. One of them is quite crude and doesn't require you to install anything and the other one is a little bit more intuitive so we're gonna cover both and I suppose I'll leave it up to you guys. Oh my god, what is that cat doing? I can't do this intro. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, as I was saying, guys, I'm going to let you decide which method you want to use. And uh, let's just dive right into it. <laughs> this freaking cat. Let's get right into the builder here and let's place a couple of objects. Let's place a straight piece. Let's actually, you know, let's get rid of the straight piece. Let's place a start, you know, because order will kind of matter. You'll see why in a second here. Uh, we'll place another straight piece and we are going to place one of these tunnel pieces sure why not so now that we've got these pieces in here you know say i want the tunnel to be massive and say i want the track to be tiny and say i want my finish or rather start to be you know half the size right so before we do anything else we're going to save the track and now we're going to open the folder that those tracks are kept in now if you guys aren't sure where your levels are being saved to you can actually open the map browser again and click this button up top on the right and it will open the folder where your maps are stored so here we are as you can see i've got my scaling track right here we're going to click on that and you have two files you have scaling.zip level and you have scaling underscore thumbnail.jpg which we don't really need now as you can see mine is already ready to open in notepad however yours likely won't be so you're going to have to right click and do open with and select notepad yada 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 and eventually once you get around to that you will open a file that looks like this looks cool right <laughs> so all of this information right here it's not really necessary i believe this defines like your world and some other stuff the invalid track line is obviously for validating your track if you want to do it manually which i don't personally recommend it can screw some things up but you do you i'm just here to show you guys how to scale objects as you can see we have three lines of random numbers here now these numbers represent object ids they represent the object's location in the world they represent the scale of the object and a bunch of other variables for things like colors and other things that i don't understand and we're not going to be covering that we're just here to cover the scaling so as you guys can see on every line of numbers we have three ones one 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 not to be confused with the ones at the end here we're not touching these but these first three ones in a row is actually the scale of your object and these are the numbers that you want to change depending on how big you want your objects to be or small or small so i said that i want the start to be half its size so i'm going to set that to 0.5 all three values we don't want no funny stretching going on now i did say that i want the track piece to be tiny in which case we're just going to set it to 0.1 here all three perfect and i said i wanted the tunnel piece to be massive right so let's set that to 10 10 and 10 so now all these objects should be altered in our map so let's save this and let's get out of here and let's see what this actually did right so we're gonna reload the track where is it scaling there we go open it up and oh my goodness as you guys can see the tunnel is massive we can take it we can copy it we can paste it it's massive yet again so that doesn't change as you can see the finish is half its size we can tell by you know how much narrower the track is compared to the starting piece and of course the uh the track piece right here is just absolutely tiny so there you have it guys now the only objects that you can't really scale as i found are you know things like cats uh fridges uh trash cans you know things that you bump into things that you can move things that you can interact with those objects are not scalable as far as i know but if one of you guys knows how to do it then definitely put it down in the comments below so here you go guys this is the first method it's pretty crude it doesn't need you to install anything extra it literally just needs you to open a text file and you know change some numbers now, if you're savvy, you could probably figure out which variables are responsible for what and change the colors of things like boosters, for example, you know, because boosters are only specific colors. You can not change those. However, if you figured out, you know, which variable represents the color of the booster, then you'd be able to change that. A lot of cool things that you can do with that. But I guess it's time for me to show you guys the much simpler integrated method for scaling objects in Zapekist. Let's do it.
So the first thing you guys want to do is actually download the Zapekist Mod Manager, aka Modkist. I'll have the link down in the description below, and this will allow you to install mods and plugins into your game. Now personally, I'm not a huge fan of messing with vanilla states of games, however this seems to be quite stable, and I haven't had any issues with this, I've actually built a track using this plugin already, so, so far so good, definitely give it a try, but uh, on to the next step. So once you've got all that downloaded and unzipped, you're going to want to start up modkist.e and it's going to open up this window you're going to click play and it's going to start up well the actual mod manager pretty neat stuff let's filter by plugins here and we're going to go into the search and we're going to type in object level editor object properties this is exactly what we want guys we're going to subscribe to that right now and uh, once it tells us we're all good, we're going to start up Zapekist. You can start it right through the mod menu here. Now, like I said, I can't vouch for the stability of the mods and plugins in this game, guys. But so far, I've had no issues. So, you know, just gonna keep using it, I guess. <laughs> so now, if we place an object, guys, let's take this guy right here. Boom, we have a menu on the left, which lets us just do all the scaling in-game. This is amazing. See, so we can stretch it out. We can make it longer, oh, or just give it no depth whatsoever, make it absolutely 2D. So there you go, guys. The scaling is fully integrated. It doesn't take a whole lot to install either, much less tedious than a lot of mods that I've dealt with for some games. So yeah, you can also rotate, which is actually kind of cool. 45, there you go. Kind of helps, you know, if you just want to do things manually rather than with the, uh, you know, the interactive controls here. But yeah, guys, that's about it. I think this is a very nifty tool. I think I think it makes for really cool track builds. In fact, my next track that I have planned is going to be utilizing this tool and uh, I'm really excited for it because there's just so much more things that you can actually do with something like this. Now apparently scaling may cause some issues with shaders which is why it hasn't officially been put into the game yet. However, I think we can expect to see something like this in the future. You know, it's just a matter of time. But for now, these are the tools that we have available to us. I think they're pretty sweet. And one thing that I forgot to mention actually is that this is very handy for decreasing the amount of objects that you use in your world. So for example, if you need to build a really tall building, you know, you can expand a really big piece, like a really big wall piece, instead of, you know, having to use like 50 different ones. Not only is that going to make the lag a lot better for some people, you know, with slower computers, but it's also going to make building a lot easier because you don't have to move around, you know, 50 objects. You can just click one, move it over and call it a day. But here you have it, guys. That's it. That's the whole tutorial. It's pretty simple. And I really want to thank the Zapekiss Builders Clubhouse Discord server because they're the ones that helped me figure this out in the first place, especially lurk he uh, he created the first tutorial on steam and that helped me you know do the text editing and recently we got the integrated one which is just fantastic so once again thank you to the community and thank you guys for watching and uh stay tuned for more awesome tracks bye